PSA 10 Shiny Charizard continues to decline. A lot of prices are holding steady for the release of Sword and Shield, and if you have not pre-ordered your booster boxes yet, this is a good episode for you. This is Pokemart. What is up? I'm Moana Turtle and welcome to Pokemart, the series where we take a look at the Pokemon TCG secondary market to see what kind of cards are making what moves. As always, we're going to start with some of the promos that aren't really part of any set and we're going to start with Trev Noir, the Pale Moon box that retails for $20 and you can pick that up even at you know, your local Target or Walmart and still remains a very good deal. Now uh, we've been opening these on the episode, I think we're going to try Meowth one, we'll get into more about that later. But let's just take a look, so on TCG Player this guy is still looking a little bit over $12. And the Jumbo card, uh, we do have a couple of light damage copies um, and then the rest are over closer to 9. Uh, shout out to Thrill and it sounds like from his experience, um, you know, he was actually bought some and was struggling to sell his jumbo cards for more like four. So maybe this is not exactly a good representation. And when we kind of look at there's only seven prices, maybe that's more of a lack of demand uh, rather than a good selling point. However, I do think there is evidence that they will still go for about five. Although these things where they say like buy one, get one free, maybe that has something to do with, um, although this one is sold, this also sold for five and with no kind of promotion like that. But definitely Trev Noir still holding around that $12 mark. And if we assume that yes, it is possible to sell, but maybe you have to be patient to sell the jumbo card for five. Right there, that's $17. We haven't got to the code card yet. And um, yeah, the box is only 20, it comes with four packs. I don't know, it feels like such a good buy, assuming you can get the promo out. Uh, I had to be very careful last time I tried to do that. So Trev Noir remains a very solid purchase. You know, I think this, the idea of that when people do like mass box openings that they can't find these cards, they only get it from those boxes. And you, uh, obviously this is a pretty good card. You know, it's just a recipe for success and kind of like a always solid thing where, you know, a lot of products or you buy it, it's a straight up loss. This thing is, pretty good or very good at, you know, at least you can retain the value that you spend on the product. All right, let's move over to the Meowth. Um, I've been playing this card. I basically substituted it in for uh, Reshi's art into my ABZ deck or abilities art, and it's so much fun to play. And let's take a look how it's doing. So as far as I can tell, so the interesting thing here is uh, whether or not these prices will hold. We're actually open one of these boxes, see how we can do. Actually, we'll hit the numbers first. So the Meowth V, not that good of a card, but it's obviously essential for VMAX. And looks like it's about $5 on TCG player and we go to the VMAX one um, <laughs> this this cat is just looks ridiculous uh, but that one's holding closer to seven and then the jumbo card um, yeah it's more like two and if we take a look at the code card so like another three so if we kind of add up those numbers let's say this is five uh, closer to seven so that's 12 uh, 14 you know 17 with the code card um, so that you know, that's not bad. Uh, the so kind of where I picked up a handful of these was off of Game Nerds. Uh, currently, they are sold out, uh, but we're gonna use our goal of to reach uh, you know break even is about over twenty two dollars. They are currently out of stock, but if you do want to pick one up from these uh, this vendor, just pop your email address. I do find that sometimes they restock. I'll put a link down below if you're looking for this product. So we'll try it out. Definitely not as good as the Trev Noir. But here's the important thing, as far as I could tell, I could not find any evidence that these two cards will be in the short Sword and Shield set compared to like Team Up where they kind of gave the um, Magic Card Warlord tag team and then it was in the next set. It's unclear if that's the case, uh, I found no evidence and if that's the case, this is basically the same thing as Trev Noir. Where if this card remains good, which I'm not convinced it will, but if it does, you know, maybe these cards could even go up in value potentially once, you know, the V meta starts to settle in. So I could, if I had to guess, these cards will go down over time, but you never know, um, especially if it's not part of the Sword and Shield set. All right, let's move to Cosmic Eclipse. Uh, this thing feels pretty stagnant at this point. 
All right, Charizard breaks in <laughs> super low. You can pick someone up closer to 30. Uh, but yeah, 40, the market price is still holding around 40. And then basically what we've come to expect, Caitlyn, Cynthia, really good card. Rosa is surprisingly good. Still plenty of a good amount of ADPs out there. And then basically we're filling in with all the good tag team supporters. Uh, one thing I'm kind of, I feel like, uh, I feel like I face a lot, see a lot more Mal and Lana used over Rosa. Uh, however, it does seem like Rosa usually is pretty high. I'm just curious what kind of drives that. And then we kind of have like those rainbows and secrets. Uh, tag calls is kind of going down. Great catch is going down. You know, once, once V sets in, you know, these cards are basically maybe obsolete depending on how the meta shakes out where if there's actually no tag call still has a chance just because to pull these supporters, I suppose, but great catcher, you know, once these are somewhat relevant it's basically a liability to throw these in because they might be useless and uh, rounding out the board then we have some of the other supporters and stuff like that but at this point we're already getting close to like the ten dollar mark for the secret rare so uh, cosmic eclipse continues to stay super low but i guess we can kind of expect that charizard breaks in for sold listings on ebay every once in a while there's still a pretty high one let me just do a quick refresh yeah so 80 but yeah somewhere anywhere between low 50 to upper 80s it's, i'm not i'm curious what drives this like huge jump uh maybe it's just like good centering and stuff like that but uh all right so that, that's actually not, better than i was expecting moving on to hidden fates this jumped out at me when I first saw it. Okay, Charizard for one, less than one, or no, 180 basically after shipping. Like, oh my gosh, this thing is tanking faster than I was expecting. But that is for a light played one. And once we go to near mints, we're, we're still below 200. And, you know, under 195 for a single one from a small seller. But it's still, you know, if it's not going up. That's, I think that's the important thing. Um, and we'll take a look at the PSA side of that in a little bit. But then to for the rest of the cards, this thing has become it's become pretty stale as well. Cynthia still pretty good. I wonder when uh, Magnolia comes out in Sword and Shield, what that'll do to Cynthia. Uh, but then we have the evolutions as expected for the eight cards that I still need for my master set. Uh, I feel like Lele and Feeny are still kind of high. Feeny's not too bad, I suppose, but Lele. You know, still around mid 20s. Um, maybe I can wait out a little bit longer. Feeny's not too bad. Maybe I can pick that up. But then after that, things like Brooklet Hill that I need, Fisherman, and the some number of Shiny GXs. At this point, like yeah, just pick them up on the secondary market. I don't need them to be PSA 10 worthy or anything. That's going in my binder collection anyway. So and let's see. All right. So we did talk about Charizard. Let's move on to eBay. So if you want to pick up a Charizard right now. 240 still seems pretty high. Yeah, once again, you know, eBay just continues to be a little bit higher compared to some of the vendors on TCG Player. And so it almost feels like now is not a good time. Or no, eh, it hasn't been a good time to pick up a Charizard for quite some time. And you see some of these PSA 10 ones mixed in for over 500. And I wonder if these will stay around because... All right, let's take a look at sold listings real quick. Getting a little bit ahead of myself. Actually, here it is. That PSA 10 sold for 455. And so, like, kind of last week, we're it was still kind of holding that $500 mark, and it's continuing to go down. But yeah, sold listings kind of reflects that. You know, any Charizard close to or below 200 seems to be gobbled up on eBay, even some of these 220s. Uh, but so it feels like you know the going rate is even on eBay quickly getting to under 200, 175 right here. Looks like it's kind of off center though. So continuing to go down, like a lot of you guys have been stating for quite some time, Cynthia, I mean, you know, Cynthia's not moving too much anymore, not too much to speculate here, but PSA 10, all right, yeah, 455 reader cell is 475, so this thing is dropping pretty quickly, and let's take a look at the pop report, I'm not sure how often they update this, but, you know, obviously still heavily skewed towards the 10, close to 500 versus 149s one thing i will say is that the most recent wave i feel like there's a good amount of centering issues for a lot of the cards um the non-gx shinies i like how they have that the texture but that plays no relevance here but then for the shiny gx's uh fuller supporters i've I, to, in my own experience it feels like the centering is less um has decreased uh, the quality of the centering has decreased even sometimes it's inconsistent between the front and the back which can't make it easy to grade if that's like two variables not just one thing for centering it's like front centering and back centering and they're sometimes different the chance of getting maybe that will mean that there'll be a influx of nines 
but that's more speculative on my part and only commenting based on what I've personally seen. But one thing we can look at is this population chart. This is PokemonPrice.com. Uh, it's a super useful website because basically, I, my understanding is this thing scrapes eBay sales to fill out this data. It is kind of behind. So this is still latest sale was from mid-December. But we can take a look at that general trend. And when, you know, as of right now, it's 10 is still leaps and bounds over nines. At least for the foreseeable future, I think we can only expect this thing continue to trickle down where probably these things are still being graded at a pretty fast clip and uh, you know the demand probably I don't see it going up anymore um, especially again you know hidden faces you can still buy is becoming easier and easier to find it at places like Target so I mean the population will only go up but again if there's a quality issue maybe the 10 can bounce back but I kind of doubt it all right, now we're gonna move on to Sword and Shields. Uh, it's still too early to try to trace some of the uh, individual cards. So we're just gonna look at the sealed uh, prices and basically we're gonna focus on the booster box. Obviously that is the best way to get your most packs for your dollar. And so we're gonna look at a couple places all right, so we're going to take a look at a handful of places, you know, a couple options you can pick it up. Obviously, there's going to be more than we're going to go over. A lot of times people ask me, you know, where it is that I get mine. Um, it's usually a combination of whatever I can find the cheapest, whether it's eBay uh, or Game Nerds or some other vendor. I would say those two are my primary sources for booster boxes. Um, but, you know, people have said some other things. So we'll take a look at eBay, kind of like where things are landing right now. One thing to mention is actually you can't really see it on screen, but Rakuten does have a 2% cash back for toys and hobbies um, that's actually not bad I feel like more often not it's zero sometimes it's 1% so 2% is pretty good and yes that stuff does add up over time but if you were looking on eBay to pick up or to do your pre-orders uh, looks like lowest is around like 88 now obviously the ones are much higher um, I usually try to time these with basically stack as many rewards things as possible whether it's Rakuten or Rakuten and eBay bucks and stuff like that to get the kind of like the best deal and uh, You know a lot of times I have to pre-order quite in advance So we'll go over what I purchased and that was like months ago But eBay so so eBay is about little getting close to 90 and I just do some quick searching I've actually don't purchase from Dave and Adams I purchased from their eBay store before but I never purchased from their directly from their own website But they do have free shipping over 100 uh, and you know they do sell it for 90 as well and a box of deck protectors I'm not sure what they mean by deck protectors, but from BCW my guess is not that um, Good, but if you do kind of pay up front It looks like you can get a case for 520 which I believe it comes out to like $87 so it is a little bit cheaper uh, from Dave and Adams and that will obviously be uh, free shipping as well um, oh, I'm sorry free shipping over 200 which if you buy a case which is kind of a lot, you know You'll obviously get there um, There is a popular eBay store that's you know supposedly like a distributor or something called like uh, sports and more or MVP They do have there are their website is kind of like in beta But if you do happen to have access to it, we were lucky enough to get access to the site Because uh, we have done business with them in the past and they actually have a really good sale for $84 um, however, this is kind of like invite only. Um, I'm not sure what they're if they have it on their eBay. So I did find their um, eBay store, and it seems like the only way to get a box is through like these bundle things, which I usually don't find those are worth it. So they're not selling the booster box by itself. It seems like they're just selling it on their website, which is kind of invite only. But if you do have access to this and you just kind of ignored it, uh, yeah, that's a pretty good, pretty good price point right there. 84, I guess that's. Uh, about the cheapest we've seen so far. Uh, we mentioned Gabe Nerds before. Actually, one thing about the beta site is I'm not sure if their rewards program is really set up yet. And through Game Nerds, it's kind of pretty consistent, but not always the cheapest. And theirs looks like they, if you buy a whole case, it's about five, five thirty, which I think is about like eighty-eight dollars per box. And if you go for down to a single box, you basically look at that ninety, which is basically the same price point as eBay um, they do have a rewards program which is close to like 3% if you save up you kind of get like a um, 
when you get to that $100 mark uh, for $100 cash back, it comes out to a little bit less than 3%. Uh, when you compare it to eBay, which they don't have an e-bucks promo e e promotion, but with Rakuten, it's about the same thing. Uh, but Game Nerd, so in my experience, a lot of eBay vendors, I find that I get it significant, like a week after release. Game Nerds um, from Texas to the East Coast, I'm outside of Boston, which is a good distance. I usually get it the Monday after release, which isn't ideal, but if you live closer to Texas, maybe you can get it faster. They usually do ship it, like let's say it released on Friday, they'll I'll get the notice that they'll shipped on like Wednesday or something, but just isn't able to make it to me uh, by Friday, Saturday. It's more like uh, that Monday. And um, so probably, I don't know how many episodes back, uh, closer to it was November was when I kind of made my purchase pre-sale. So this is when my point here is that if you buy it months in advance, so if you're able to do that, that's definitely uh, when you time it right, that's in my opinion, the best way to go. We'll try to show some of the details of mine. And yeah, so don't think there's any sensitive information being shown right here, but you can kind of see uh, what I purchased was three boxes off of eBay. And I can just move this picture over here. So yeah, the subtotal came to 220. They had some kind of sale. So it was like uh, $11 off came after tax came to 221. So that means the um, before before tax, you know, it was 210, and there was actually an eBay bucks uh, promotion, 10% back eBay bucks. So I would get 10% back from that, which is essentially $21. Uh, so then the after tax, if you include the eBay bucks, which basically is for a future purchase, it kind of came to 200. Yeah, so 200 um, after you know cash back, which is you know. You, you pay more now, but then you get some cash back bonus later. Uh, but then, you know, so that's pretty good. And so, you know, my point kind of here is at this point, yes, the things that we went over earlier, those, you still have some options, you know, anywhere from like 90 to as low as 83 if you have an invite. Um, but if you do pre-order and actually it says right here, pre-ordered November 26th. So that is, that was quite a while ago. Um, but so if you do pre-order a few months in advance, you can get it significantly cheaper, a little bit less than $70 per box. So uh, yeah, just some, you know, for future reference where if we bring this stuff kind of up, like, you know, it does help um, if you're able to purchase ahead of time. Um, so as always, guys, that's gonna be it for me today. If you have any thoughts um, or any other, you know, if you have, or if you're aware of a good sale that you know you want to bubble up to the rest of the viewers let me know and i'll probably like pin the comment or something um i'll post some of the links down below in the description but uh yeah that's gonna be it for me today as always if you have topics that you would like to see covered on pokemart let me know in the comment down below and uh yeah that's it for me today thanks for watching i'm moana turtle and i'll catch you guys next time all right for the last section of pokemon we're gonna be opening up this v max box let these cats out and see if we can't recoup our value but i believe it comes out to like the promos the jumbo card and the code card come out to 17 dollars. so we kind of have to make up like five dollars or so out of five packs uh, i think there are two xy ones uh so we'll need a good hit from like a cosmic clips or unified minds to hit that $22 mark going from you know the price that we paid for them on game nerds again there I'll put a link down below but it looks like they are sold out but they do come back in stock occasionally and this code card all right so that's like three dollars right there it's off the side and here are our cats if you do manage to pick up that code, I do recommend you try this on a line. And again, if this, if these two cards are not printed in the actual set, oh no, it's Guardian Horizons, but that's just as bad. All right, so we'll go like this. Evolutions, not too many cards to help us out here. We'll probably need like a, I don't know, Charizard or like a Mega Blastoise. Let's see, code card is this way. And we'll see what we can do. Ooh, DCE, not terrible. Put this off here. Charmander, there is a Psychic Energy. Pikachu, Machop. Reverse is an Onyx, followed by, okay, Ninetales. Doubt that these are really worth anything though. 
Moving on to Guardians Rising. But yeah, so if you can find this or, you know, pick this up for, you know, low 20s, I do think it is a worthwhile product. Nowhere near as good as the Trevno are, but um, I don't know. I could see a series of events where, again, this thing's not printed in Sword and Shield, and it turns out this thing actually is pretty good. Um, you know, weakness to fighting. Not sure if there's too many scary fighting cards coming up in Sword and Shield. And does have like a draw engine. 300 HP is probably two shot for a lot of things. But you don't, I don't think you have to worry about getting one shot. Actually, no, there's still some 300 damage kind of things. So that's not exactly true. Horacosta, not the turtle we're looking for. Great Potion is a pretty good card. It's off the side. The Barrel, Stunfisk. Onyx, Finian, Grimer, Carablast, another Onyx, and then a Scrafty. So whenever you rely on the packs, you know this is not too shocking, but uh, yeah, you might not get you might not get there. And I feel like this is a perfect example of why is where like the promos get us close. And if you kind of want to have a safe bet of getting your money's worth, you know, going for something like that Trev box is where the promos make up almost entire on the entire value of the box. That is usually the only time it'll work out, especially for these loose packs. Like, you know, chances of hitting. I feel like it's very tough to hit anything in these promo kind of boxes. Ralts and ooh, OK. I thought $5 out of five packs was a reasonable goal. Apparently I was wrong. So Trev Noir still takes that top slot. But we have one more pack. Can we get anything out of this box? I don't think the secret rares will get us there either. About to sneeze. Lillipup. Trap Pinch. Sneasel. Drampa. This is actually a used card in a lot of ADP decks, but I think it's usually like a one of. And then just a Kyogre. All right, that was terrible. But <laughs> hey, we got 17 with these two cards. So um, yeah, hope you guys enjoyed the video. As always, like, comment, and subscribe. All down below. I'm Wanna Turtle, and I'll catch you guys next time.